Uh, last week was, I think, uh, the Kickstarter update when that went out. So um, that went over really well, and um, there's a lot of comments about how we all look really sad in that They're episode. Like, Cheer up, you guys! I yeah. blame uh, a certain someone. There was a couple of random cuts of me going. <laughs> that had nothing to do with what was being said. It was just it meant a lot of people came out of the woodwork that were like, "Don't be sad. We love the game, and yeah. don't listen to the haters." Yeah, and... wait, wait. Can you send this link to that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at forum threads, uh, the forum yeah, thread, the main forum thread. What did you do last week? It's even funnier in the game, you guys. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> I really am trying everything to make sure the game comes out this year. It's just going in knowing that that would mean like doing whatever it takes to make that happen and, and sacrificing in some ways. I think we do December. To me, it's like infinity far away. There's like backer expectations. There is the financial. And for me, just the possibility of actually being up for awards. It's really just the best game that we can make and we feel like we can actually make without crashing the company into the ground. Uh, so I guess on the screen right now is the current timeline for production on Act Two. This is what we're working towards and this was the attempt to get uh, to a December launch. So like even this is stuff that is a real challenge and a lot of people feel on the team um, is gonna take everything, everyone firing like on all cinders, everything falling into the right places. Um, but seems doable with a push. And so that is the other challenge is that all of this requires like our team coming back and working in full, having writing ready to go. On uh, Broken Edge, AKA Broken Edge, we have people coming back. Ray is coming back. Tomorrow. You're typing stuff. So you, you're on Facebook right over there. Just with my eyes. Facebooking. Ray is coming back tomorrow. And Rusty's been back and has been wiring up actual puzzles in Act Two. Right? Here we go. <laughs> it's been a while. It's deja vu. That's good. It's good to be back on, uh, back in the world of Shay and Vela. So uh, I took, um, took a little time off away from it. Not off of Double Fine, but just away from the Broken Age and helped out on a couple of other projects. And that was great because it was just totally different and um, just a new, it was a nice break. Wow, the team's is big again. Look at that, and Oliver's working. Uh, we're implementing puzzles, and scenes are getting drawn, and like assembled scripts are getting written. So it's um, it's pretty good. But we've got Ben Peck back now as well on the project, which is good. Exactly. Wow, that was a roller coaster. Like now we're gonna have to do the whole thing over again in less time. Yeah, I guess at this point it's one of these things where we know that we'll be able to do the game and that it will be to the standard that we have in Act 1. Like that's not a risk, right, or that's not a concern that we have. But we just, like now it's like, okay, can we do this in a few months? Um, and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we've worked through a lot of the kinks that we experienced during Act 1, so it's really just about pure execution at this point. So this was, I mean, this wouldn't stay here, but if you had like everything on, so they kind of don't overlap each other, but they all add up yeah. versus like the start. That's cool. Here. That's neat. It's, since it's the only thing that's really changed, hopefully it becomes like player knows it's a focal point. Mm -hmm. You know, they know they gotta keep going back because it's Yeah, it, it makes it more different. interesting. I'm pretty excited about how much of the tech we already have in place and we can just like hit the ground running on just wiring up the gameplay and stuff like that. Um, so that maybe makes it a little less exciting in a way, just because it's not new. Um, as far as figuring things out, but also makes you less nervous, um, you know, because we know, okay, it worked. Um, and, you know, there's a few things we want to change. We really need to work on the, the flipbook interface. Um, it's not very intuitive. Another thing, um, is there any way, Oliver, I know we've mentioned this in the past, but f faster exporting of, of Anims from Maya. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just these, it's, yeah. this, we have a lot of big scenes, Tim writes long scenes, and they, and you make one change, you test it, you're like, oh, geez, okay, that's got to change. Then you got to re-export again, it's another 10, 15 minutes, so. I mean, one thing, interesting thing to investigate is whether or not we could launch Maya in batch mode somehow and, like, execute the script on it. Uh, what if sure. we have a network machine that does it? 
just just like when you know, Brutal Legend, we eventually stopped doing local exports of the movie and started having the build machine do it. Yeah, because, you know, it would also help if we didn't have you know seven year old machines with only four gigs of RAM. So. It could just be fixed by, you know, so I don't know. Write that. <laughs> yeah, Greg. <laughs> Buy all new computers. <laughs> so it'll, it'll just make workflow easier. I think it'll uh, save us a lot of time in bug fixing. You know, I noticed um, that there were a lot of animation bugs as the production went on. And, and some of those, a lot of those boiled down to like sorting issues. Mm -hmm. Basically, one piece of geometry didn't know whether it should sort in front or in back of another piece of geometry. The way we've done sorting to support all the platforms is, is limited, and uh, they spend a lot of time cleaning that up. Like, if we knew that we were only making it for a high-end console ever, we'd probably have had different solutions that would have removed some of the burden off the animators or artists, but, uh, you know, when you're developing a new engine and you're supporting a, a really wide array of platforms, um, you can't really do that, or at least it's harder. <sighs> yeah. But think, Oliver, this is way more fun than fixing compatibility errors. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Ben, you're on some stuff now, right? And I guess a, a yeah. lot of this would be coming your way. How do you feel about crunching? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's always a balance for every engine I've been on. Because all the, all the games I've worked on, I've never used commercial license engines. So they've always been developed in-house. So there's always this balance between getting the game done and adding tools to make making the game more effective. And it's really hard to know where that balance should be. I guess I just wanted to mention that there's a ball of work potentially to like fix some of the workflows that got broken and also improve some things that we never got a chance to improve to try and also make the content production of Act 2 as efficient as possible. Like, this, this, this schedule to some degree also relies on the fact that just like in Act 1, we actually have some manpower available to fix and even possible improve the workflow. Uh, which is right now really bad because it just like bit rotted all away because nobody had time to really look at it. Like opening scenes takes insane amount of time. Nobody really knows why. I don't have time to look into it. Nobody is. Anna needs to work. We only have two programmers. If we're worried about December, that seems like that's going to be something that makes it even more challenging. Just something to throw in the bucket with the rest of it. Um, and so we're we're going into a more traditional production cycle now, trying to actually build the very specific game assets, not just design them pre-production one. And we're finishing our first sprint of Act 2. This is the first time we've played through since we started Act yeah. 2. Yeah, although I need to make sure that the sound is actually working. Last time on Broken Age. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna have that? Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. It's better not fucking end here. It better not be the end. I paid fifteen dollars for what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pull on. <sighs> okay. Oh my god, is it gonna go right into it? Maybe. Awesome. That's so nice and smooth. So when you play through the game. I, the only thing is, like, do you want? To, do you think we should still put the text up, like end of Act One? I wonder. No, no, no. This is just going. Yeah. yeah. You guys seem to have already come to an agreement about this one. Let's see. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we could, but it wouldn't be. Should as... I pick the girl? No. Don't do it. You can't. It'd be a very short playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> ah, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh no, a horrible bug. Oh. He needs uh, runs. You know what I realized too, is as Shay's in all these scenes, is he feels a bit small in all of them. He's a correct scale, but he's actually, he's, he's, he's so much smaller feeling than Vela. Their height is about the same, but because she has the bigger hair and a wider face, like he looks small talking to the same characters and stuff. If you, like when you just, and I, I've double and triple checked the scale and it's all correct. Hmm. It just, Wonder yeah. if we should make him bigger. Well, would throw off all the stuff at this point. So I assume, I think Lydia is awkward. She came because I think she thinks this is like a surprise going away party. No. <laughs> she keeps coming to things like, is this, where the, is this where the cake is, you guys? Is this where we're having the big going away? This is Lydia's last playthrough before she goes to, that's Oculus. Oh. That's my gesture for Oculus. Face hugger. Um, anyone have any last words for Lydia? 
This thank you for all your hard work, work Lydia. Thank you for all all your VFX in Act One were amazing, and we hope we get somebody anywhere near as good as oh. you to correct too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> good old Lydia. The turnover here is very is not high. It's it's actually um, it's not high at all, and um, I think sometimes we're lucky to have people for as long as we do. Um, and it is a little scary, like we were talking about effects today a little bit, but then I was, you know, then in the back of your head, you're like, wait, who's going to do these? I know Lee was doing a little bit of effects work the other day, but he's not going to have time to, like, be the effects person. Um, so I'm just going to have to trust that they can find somebody, because uh, we do have, we have a couple other effects artists, but they're on other projects, so, um, so we're going to have to find somebody new that can come in and try and match that style and um, and we will we will and so so we'll, we'll find somebody that can that can do it so uh, I'm not freaking out but I don't know she was great okay but it's awesome to see those puzzles coming together yeah. we'll be done by December exactly. it's nice that you know what that's where everyone huge... jumps up and is like yeah people were worried about it being done in December earlier and then the writing was taken even a little bit longer than they thought, so I bet people were even more worried about it being done in December. Mm -hmm. But we did not quite finish the work, the milestone, and when we started the milestone, we were like, from now on, we don't finish milestones, we're just gonna cut stuff if we don't finish them <laughs> in the milestone, so I guess we're just gonna have to cut half of those puzzles. So we're gonna go back to that meeting we had where we said that we're gonna cut stuff and be like, okay, listen, so it's not totally reasonable to just cut stuff that doesn't get done. We're going to just have to make up for it somehow. Log, I think the intent was never to be, oh, we didn't finish that puzzle. We're just not doing it. It was, it was that we didn't want to leave a wake of unfinished, half-implemented puzzles for a variety of reasons. And one, one was you can't play test a half-implemented puzzle meaningfully. And we wanted to play test sooner to help ameliorate the amount of like play test adjustments at the end when we have less flexibility because the dialogue's recorded and we're running out of time. So, I mean, it's, it's all those reasons why we're trying to, to do that. But what actually wound up happening for a couple of reasons was just that we didn't hit those two puzzles. So we're effectively, I don't know, a week or so behind already on the schedule in our first two week sprint. And it's gonna continue, like we'll continue to get further behind unless we can close out puzzles on that sprint. And there's, I don't see anything that changes that. Right now, for example, there's really only one puzzle that's finished writing. We can't finish the whole patch puzzle chain because it's missing writing. We can't finish the hexapal wiring. We can't finish the radiation suit. So that still means we're behind. Hmm. Okay. Would that allow us to potentially catch up if we get the writing in time? So I bet I'm maybe the last person who thinks we can get it done in December. Probably is. Do you kind of sense when you're in a position where the Everyone kind of thinks you're not going to make the deadline, but they just haven't told you yet. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend I haven't heard it yet until they, it's just too much time has gone by, they can't tell me. And then they won't tell me. And then we'll make it on time, see? That's how I operate. That's kind of mind games. There's two different scenarios that we can do, pretty much. Um, well, one is we don't ship in December. <laughs> I mean, that's mm -hmm. probably the one we don't want to go for. And the other That's one good. Um, basically eats into beta period so that we wouldn't have a true beta. We would actually have animations and VFX um, and a lot of the audio stuff coming in late, like into beta. And there's a lot of risk involved in doing that. So that was something that we were trying to avoid. Then it's like getting the writing done so we can have a video session in time to where we get the files back soon enough to get animators pumping through that from Super Genius, but also so it's not late, too late to where we're screwing audio and VFX guys. Um, so there's just kind of a, a balance in there. We, we presented Tim with a really aggressive schedule for delivering the writing that we needed in order to keep the team on schedule. Um, and it was requiring him to work at a faster pace than he's ever written on the projects up to this point. It's a challenge for everybody, um, but it all starts with the writings. Yeah, so Tim, did you see the email that I sent you where I said I just did this little exercise, I counted Yeah, it. I deleted that one immediately. It was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> you were the, that was the one where you're like, it looks like you spent a year writing this first one, so... No, no, and it's, uh, no, because you didn't take it. You spent like 13 weeks, and oh. to me, uh, you know, we don't, 
we don't really succeed when we say, hey, Tim, write faster. It's kind of a, an impossible thing to to do. Uh-huh. Um, so for me, I just don't see December as a, as a reality. So I don't know if we want to make a call now or if we want to say, let's try to write the rest of the game in four and a half weeks and still squeeze it in. I don't know. I, I mean, didn't worry about the quality then. I mean, because even, if, Tim, even if you locked yourself away and you wrote for a month, you know, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, Tim, do you think you can do that? Um, again, I don't see a lot of choice. I mean, it'll, it'll be a gnarly schedule for everybody. Mm-hmm. All right, so why don't we create those scenarios and then we can share that links this group and we can talk about it from there. Well, I better get writing. Yeah. All right. Woohoo. You can do it, Sam. You can do it. Mm. Okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. Thanks for talking. I wish I had more easy solutions for everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Hi, Melina. Okay. I'm getting bagel, too. We'll see if he comes. Um... Tim's not coming new day today, you guys. Why not? He is in his office with a big sticker that says, do not disturb, Melina says. So he's writing. No, he's actually, he's been killing it. He's been cranking through stuff really quick. Uh, I think he sees the deadlines looming and is staying really on top of stuff. So I think uh, if he keeps going at this pace, then yeah, we're gonna have a good shot at it. Yeah, he's doing his best and it, it's coming in really nice and, and solid now. So it's good to see. As long as we can survive till the end of the project, it'll be great. I gotta, I guess I gotta finish my dialogue before you guys get to talk to me ever again. Yeah. Out. Out. Just kidding. Just come in anytime you want, anytime you want. Is that a good enough ending? I'll do it like this. I guess it's just another day in games. Right? Right? I can close my door and I can put a post-it note on it and I can even lock it. But just walking around the office, people will be like, ah, I need you to talk, to, I need to talk to you about this thing. And then that thing leads me to another thing and someone wants to talk about another thing. So many projects going on, so many deals that um, I probably should be helping with and, you know, they justifiably need some input or something, but um, I just uh, have to get this writing done. I just have to get this writing done. So everything else in the company has just got to gotta operate on its own for a while. We're here at the uh, Noe Valley Public Library. Uh, this is my house. is a few blocks down that way. I've come to libraries ever since trying to design full throttle. I remember going down to the Sausalito Library and sitting there and designing, sitting there with my notebook, same exact thing. Um, Grandma went to the library a lot. I actually did a lot of research in the libraries because the internet was not full of stuff as it is now. It's also nice to get out of the office. It's changed the scenery. I used to think, like, on full throttle, I went to the library and I got so much done the first day, and I was like, this is great, this is my new secret. And then I went down the next day and I didn't get any work done. I was like, what's going on? And I got a lot of work done in the office, and then sometimes I get a lot of work done in my home, and sometimes I just think there's no, there's no one answer. You just have to keep moving around and shuffling around. And I think in the end, it really, in some ways, doesn't matter. You just have to, like, work at it every day, and some days you get nothing done, and some days you get a lot done. But you have to do it every day. It's coming along really fast. I mean, they really are working twice as fast as Act One. And we don't have everyone that we had in Act One. Remember Act One, we had like JP and uh, Brandon and all these people. And this one's been on the gameplay side, just like Anna and Ben cranking away on it. There's certain puzzles we should make sure to hit first. That I think we should hit the stuff that we played the least first, which is the the radiation suit um, puzzle. I would do that one first. So cool. Spring kickoff. I missed the playthrough, but I heard it was good. The playthrough was awesome. And did anybody have anything they want to say about it? The was this particularly awesome because I wasn't here? Like everyone's like, yeah, I feel yeah, so I mean, relaxed. That was, that was like a plus. <laughs> Why is it so chill here? I don't know what's going on. I mean, I think it was pretty solid. There was there. I mean, the puzzles were. It became clear in the playthrough that the puzzles were a lot more complex than the first act, uh, which was cool. 
This is a good puzzle. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> no. You need a pin there, Ben? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got one. Because there are more steps in them, and the puzzles, a lot of them aren't just, say, using an object in a place, but there's some trial and error, things you can manipulate and see different results. Um, I think the separate puzzle chains kind of weave in and out of each other. So I think that um, that's where some of the, I think, some people would describe that as difficulty, which is true, but I think it's also just the uh, appearance. and and actual complexity that was maybe missing from some of the puzzles in the first act. Mm -hmm. And part of that was by design, both to, to ramp it up, but also, you know, Tim, um, I think in both cases, this, from a story standpoint or from a theme standpoint, the characters kind of start constrained, mm -hmm. and therefore the players kind of constrained, and they kind of break out of that constraint. And that means that it was just a little more, you know, there wasn't much opportunity for the puzzles to kind of weave back and forth through each other. So what are your thoughts, you guys? It's fucking awesome. So good. It's really it's long. Yeah. 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 It's, it's super fun. I like. I really love that last puzzle. Yeah, I think it's just like from a high level, it feels like uh, what we're hoping, which is like much less linear and spread out, and you're having to really kind of retrace your steps a lot. So, and I just realized a flaw, though, right? Like, if you are playing the girl and you take her all the way to the end of her chain. Oh, you want my? And you haven't seen the. Because they're not part of, we have to make sure they're part of her critical puzzle that you have to see them. Because I'm thinking about this now, you finished him and you didn't hear which is what she will need to right. solve the is this not critical path. Yeah. And there's no way to go back to it because you're in a scrolling thing. Yeah, and same with him, same with her where if you've gone all the way through and saw it and just didn't notice it and then now you don't remember the pattern. Well, and this one is specifically you have to be able to go and test it. And once we put you in this mode, you can never go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how we solved that. That's a good question for Tim. Oh, this is, I feel like this might this be a horrible big thing one. that I don't really want to think about. Yeah, we're not really sure what to do about this. This is a big one. Let's just see how that works in playtest. No! <laughs> that doesn't this work. <laughs> we saw it. Now we've made it so that you and Bill and Shay need each other. Like, you need things from both areas to work in the other areas. Um, and we did that on purpose, but then we forgot, we didn't forget, we just failed to remember that. <laughs> um, you can play one character completely, and then, like in the first act, you could play all of Shay and then go play all of Ella, or vice versa. Um, and since we made them interdependent, we thought that wasn't a problem, but if you shut down this whole character and go into that looping animation that means their act is done, you can't find the things you need to solve this one. So we're just gonna leave that in that unfixable state. And people will just be like, how, did you, how far did you get in Broken Age before you couldn't play anymore? And it'll be like a leaderboard. No more challenge, no more hand-holding. I just haven't figured out a solution to that yet. It's not gonna be pretty. Instead of going into the um, end state where you're looping, if you haven't solved one of those puzzles, they go into these other states, basically stalling. At that point, it does feel like it's kind of closing people off and a bit handholdy. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, okay, so we acknowledge that that is a horrible problem for Ben to solve. That we're trying to introduce some, some more than just story relationships between the, the separate mm -hmm. characters. And since we've only really taken um, Shay's second act to Alpha, um, the exact solution for how to kind of play on those and that gameplay impact isn't really obvious until we develop more of Vela's side of things. I'm really happy with Alpha on the section we just did. And um, I don't know, the rest of development is super tight if we're still trying to get December. And I think that everybody really wants to make it happen. So I think that um, if we can keep pushing forward, it should be, at least we got a shot right now. I think a lot of it's gonna come down to like this next month and a half is really important. In three, four weeks, we'll see where the writing is and hopefully um, if things look good, we can rally behind it and push and make it happen. I don't know. <laughs> December. What are we in? October? November? December. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. As far as I can tell. But, the, but the, we, had, we do not, I have not heard another date. That's just, that's the only date I've heard. Um, but I just think that there's, there's too much work, I think. As far as I can tell, there's way too much work. But that's kind of up to the um, producers to figure that out.
puzzles are great. Uh, the writing is late, but I've been getting some more done. Mm. So everybody shut up. Like, we're just not moving at the pace that that timeline has us moving at. And um, I think now that we're getting more and more writing, we're having a better idea of what it's looking like too. Um, but yeah, I think that um, the conversation of December is still a conversation that's happening and one that needs to probably be had further soon because it's just another sprint of like pushing stuff off into the next sprint um, as we have been. The problem with Velocide is that there are a lot of like mechanical or physical puzzles that are like, I don't know if it's going to communicate what we want. Like, I don't know if it's going to work exactly like how we expect. Like, you know, I think I it's just, true. I, I just don't know about if it's going to be able to, if, it, if it's going to be able to affect the timing of the VO sessions and stuff. Because otherwise we're pushing it off to work. Camden's going to get dropped with a bunch of stuff. And That sounds like the perfect solution <laughs> to me. <laughs> well, and Ray and the animators are just yeah, going to be looking for stuff. Effects artists. Yeah, you can push them a little farther than they get probably. Oh, the, the, the effects artists we're going to hire? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to make December. I mean, a lot of it, it's hard for people to commit to something being done on a certain date if a lot of things are unknown. Like, we don't know what the final act is going to look like. And if they don't, like, I can see it, but if they don't know exactly what all the assets are going to be, it's hard for them to say it'll be done by December. But I still feel good about it. Well, you got you that. Uh, I I think I found it and brought it in uh, right. and left it as a gift for my producers. <laughs> Just to give them something I could never actually give them in real life. I mean, if we're not done in December, we'd definitely be done in January. That's the thing. So it just seems like so close. Like, why miss it? I finally finished the uh, Act 2 girl dialogue. So the spaceship dialogue is done, which is exciting for me personally. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's between, it's between us. It's really important. Um, so now I'm just right. I just read the finale, which looks like this. Yeah, a lot of spoilers right there. Don't film that part. I gotta finish. I'm so close to being done with the dialogue for the game, which will be a huge milestone in my life because all I can think about is the dialogue in this game. It's a lot of dialogue in this game. So uh, why are you standing up? <laughs> I'm standing up because I have my gallbladder out. I'm trying to act cool so people don't know that I had it out. But I, if I, I don't like to sit down because if I fold. The part where they cut me open and take it out kind of hurts, but that was on Friday, and now it's Monday. Fine, it's no big deal. Gallbladders are stupid, overrated. Is that because of the juice diet? Few, uh, no one knows if it's because of the juice diet or not. Like some people, they, the doctor said it's just genetic, and you're just prone to having um, gallbladders, gallbladder stones, gallstones. But my wife is sure it's the juice diet. So no more juice. I don't know. This has been a long project. I've been through many bodily changes through this project. <sighs> stress. It's probably just the stress this game's gonna kill me. Oh, I told you it's gonna hurt. Okay, I'm gonna sit. I have to sit. Oh, now that pen's a goner because I can't go down there and get it. Last week, we went to PAX. That was awesome. We didn't do a bunch of Broken Age stuff because Broken Age was a little stealth because we were struggling with the other games. A lot of people asked about it, though. A lot of people asked about it. A lot of people said they love part one, exactly. and that was nice. I actually had a lot of people say, don't make it harder. <laughs> That's what, that was like the common oh, feedback I got. Well, too late now. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're all man. talking about how they like, played with their kids and how it was such a great experience. So. But now they're Something better. Now. They're better now. They're better at it. Yeah, the kids true, are, yeah. True, yeah. True. It's, it's a generational game. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.